24 past the hour, new polling from NBC News shows most voters remain opposed to the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, which happened one year ago tomorrow. In the survey, 61% say they disapprove of the decision to remove federal protections for abortion rights. 36% support the ruling. That is unchanged from a poll taken last September. The new opposition number includes not only Democrats, but also 60% of independents and almost a third of Republican voters. Let's bring in NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Ali Vitali. And Ali, you spoke to lawmakers, medical providers, and women who shared their deeply personal stories yeah. with you. Tell us about it. Yeah, Mika, and I was really grateful for their candor because, look, over the last year since I've been reporting on what it looks like to be post-Roe, I have heard from anti-abortion advocates who are overjoyed about the current state of things, and I've also heard from advocates who are in sheer terror about what this means for women across the country. In this conversation, though, we went to the very heart of it, to the doctors who are tasked with providing this care, to the lawmakers who are tasked with legislating around it, and, of course, to the women who are at the very center of making decisions for themselves or at least trying to. When the Supreme Court's decision on Dobbs came down a year ago, Amanda Zorowski was furious. I was outraged, but I was also actively undergoing fertility treatment. And so I did not think that an abortion was something that I would ever need or want because I didn't understand fully how abortion is health care. Months after Amanda finally got pregnant, doctors told her the fetus wouldn't make it, but also that they couldn't help. She couldn't provide an abortion. She couldn't do any of the things that she was trained to do because of the restrictions in Texas. And as a result, it landed me in the ICU with sepsis. Knowing that you had to get worse in order to get the care that you needed. Can you just talk to us a little bit more about how that felt? It was devastating on top of terrifying, on top of infuriating. You know, we had already gotten this news that we were going to lose this baby that we wanted so desperately. And then on top of that, we had to wait for something even more terrible to happen. It's a scenario and Dr. Babit a Kumar, a provider based in Texas, knows too well. Help them. I have the expertise to help them, but we're in this very difficult place where we can't. How does that feel as a doctor? It feels awful. I have the skills, I have the training. I went to medical school, residency for over a decade, and instead of helping them, I have to say no over and over and over again. This conversation with women who've had abortions, doctors, and Democratic lawmakers provides a snapshot of the impact of the first year without the protections of Roe versus Wade overturned by the Supreme Court. In its place, a patchwork of different rules across the country. That is why Roe was so important, it guaranteed that wherever you are in the country, that you will be able to make your own health care decisions. We're not just talking about um, people who may be in a situation where they can't have a child. We're also talking about people like Amanda who want a child and they're going to refuse to allow them to have the reproductive health care that they need in order to stay healthy. Though the Dobbs decision added more barriers to abortion access, it's not like other barriers didn't exist before. For Mia Lee Renna, an Army veteran who had her abortion years before the Dobb decision came down, it wasn't just accessing care, it was the stigma around it. I've overheard my superiors talking about how pregnant women were worthless. And I, quite frankly, never wanted to be a parent. I still don't want to be a parent. So as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I made the call to a local clinic. Mia counts herself as lucky that she could travel to access the abortion she sought and that she only had to travel an hour to do so. Other people have to drive and fly much further to access that procedure. And that wasn't even an option for you, right, Amanda? No, if we had made that choice and I had gone into septic shock on an airplane or in a car in the middle of the West Texas desert, I probably wouldn't be here with you today. Since the Dobbs decision, the Pentagon announced it'll offer financial support for service women that need to travel for abortion care. In response, GOP Senator Tommy Tuberville's blocking the approval of military promotions until the policy stopped, which experts say threatens national security. We need to make sure that those women who are fighting for us um, all around the world get the same access to health care that the men who serve in the military get. You don't decide whether you're going to be in Fort Hood or another state that it has easier access to abortion. People will not serve if they are fearful of where they're going to go. For Murray and Shaheen, who have fought these battles for decades. I believe in a woman's right to choose. This post-Roe period offers some stark similarities. 
and important differences. I have heard the word abortion used more in the last year than I did in my entire life and is now a subject people understand. And I hear it more from men now, too. I mean, do you hear it more from your male colleagues? I do. Among those colleagues, Senator Gary Peters of Michigan. In 2020, he became the first sitting U.S. senator to share his personal experience with abortion. My first wife and I were expecting our second child, a child that we very much wanted uh, to have. Uh, and yet the, the pregnancy uh, went wrong after about uh, four months. Uh, her water broke. Uh, uh, it was clear that something catastrophic had happened. They waited days for a miscarriage that never came. Similar to Amanda's story nearly 40 years later, the doctor was hamstrung by hospital policy. He goes, I, I went to the hospital board to get permission. Uh, there's no way this baby will survive, but there's a faint heartbeat. There's a policy against that. Uh, but I'm really worried for your health. The, you could uh, lose a uterus. It could go septic. Uh, I can't perform this procedure. My advice to you is find a doctor in a hospital immediately that can do this. And so we luckily had uh, a friend uh, who was an administrator at another hospital who got us in immediately. For those on the front lines of helping women access care, like Dr. Reagan, who leads a group that helps women find abortions, the need has only grown in the last year. We've seen an over 500% increase in site visits just in the last year since Dobbs. Um, showing that people are, you know, anxious and scared and they want to know what's going on and if they can access abortion in their state. And they're looking for care. And they're looking for care. How do you feel now a year out? Um, I think it's worse than I had expected. And Being when we, post row. Post row. Um, when I hear the stories like Amanda is telling and, and Mia and the impact that that's had on our medical system, that's why we have to keep fighting. I think every worst fear that I had has come true. And to me, that's devastating. I would say on the flip side, I am grateful that so many people like these two women and doctors are willing to stand up and tell people so that we can fight to change this decision in the future. I would say I'm exhausted. It's, you know, something that I still can't wrap my head around a year later. Uh, that this is an argument that we are still having. We're just not where I'd hope we'd be at this point. I feel committed to staying in the fight. And for Amanda, now suing the state of Texas over their abortion laws, it's also only just beginning. I feel determined um, because of what happened to me, and I feel determined to keep fighting until we make things better. And look, Mika, for all of the folks that I talked to there, this is only just the beginning. We're at a point now where we would have otherwise been saying that we were 50 years celebrating the anniversary of Roe versus Wade. Instead, now there is no. an entirely new landscape out there that presents barriers for women to care. But then also, quickly, the conversation turns to the politics of it. And it's important that you led with that new polling that we have out this morning that does show why Republican candidates in the halls of Congress, where I see them on the campaign trail, where I see them are having a tough time talking about this issue because by and large, after decades of pushing for the overturning of Roe, they got what they wanted and it's not exactly popular or in step with the American public right now. Uh, no, it's not. NBC's Ali Vitale, thank you so much for that excellent report.